a little video on uh, or a podcast, I guess, on um, magnesium in the kidneys. The kidneys are a very under, um, what do you call, underrated, I guess, uh, uh, phenomenon in, in American culture, even in the Western culture, um, because we typically stimulate a lot, and certain things are harming us that we're not aware of. For example. Uh, we wouldn't see that our kidneys were in such a bad shape if we had all if we didn't have all this stimulation and coffee and tea and everything going on sugar and so we do all these things that keep ourselves stimulated so that we don't realize that we don't have the energy right at the base level the the key or chi or whatever they call it coming through the kidneys which is where your real energy comes through not from the cortex and the mind which can be created and whipped in place through coffee and stimulants and ecstatic movement and all this kind of stuff so um just reading some quotes here on this on this topic. Primary renal disorders caused um, cause hypomagnesemia by decreased tubular reabsorption of magnesium by the damaged kidneys. So not able to reabsorb magnesium through the damaged kidneys. So the magnesium is coming through. We're not able to reabsorb it. And so the more that it's damaged, the more that we can't reabsorb it. So it's like, ah, catch 22, what do we do? Um, and so it's like um, the chat, a cat chasing its tail, you know. And so this is key uh, understanding that this condition occurs in the diuretic phase of acute tubular necrosis, uh, post obstructive diuresis, and renal tubular acidosis. So in all of these conditions, this this reabsorption of magnesium is limited, but also damage in general and structural damage, which is strange because structure is created by magnesium. The flexibility of even the kidney structure is created through magnesium. So we end up not creating the organ properly that's going to help us to use the thing. <laughs> that's It's kind of funny. It's how, how, how prevalent magnesium is there, not only in the structural level, but even in the cleanup um, phase or detoxification phase. So magnesium metabolism is accurately controlled in particular by parathyroid hormone, parathyroid hormone and 25 dihydroxy vitamin D3, um, calcitonin, catecholamine, and estrogens. The main regulation mechanisms of magnesium metabolism are located in the kidney, which is the principal excretory organ. So, and then there's also other factors like heavy metals and the increase in copper and cadmium and other aluminum and other metals in conjunction with low magnesium levels. So, this is also damaging the organs, including the kidneys, but especially the kidneys. Um, so, and then just one more quote, which seems to sum it up with what we just already said, but um, this is for the danger of the, the diuretics. So these diuretics, like thiazide, loop diuretics, etc., decrease the renal threshold for magnesium reabsorption, in addition to wasting of potassium and calcium. So um, magnesium, um, in this sense, it also acts not as a diuretic, but it acts as a natural blood thinner, too. And this helps the kidneys when it's naturally done. And so this doesn't stop other mechanisms. This is just a natural way of doing it. And the other thing to realize is that um, um, the, the kidneys have to detoxify, too, a lot of this aluminum from vaccines and everything else. So we have to get this stuff out. So the magnesium in conjunction with, like, malic acid from apples, but it's actually part of the body anyway, um, through the malate aspartate shuffle, um, I think that's, yeah, shuttle, which is part of the energy cycle. Um, it's already part of the body, so it's not just you eat apples and there it is, don't go there, but anyway, it is there in apples, it's this acidic taste, and so this mixes with magnesium, magnesium malate, breaks down aluminum, starts to pull things out. So that's one of the things, there's many things that do that in the body, from ni niacin to to, um, to um, nitrogen. Um, there's other ways that we get um, that removed. Um, but this is one of the key ways to do it is through magnesium chelation in conjunction with other acids and things. So we're trying to get that stuff out. And all that stuff is blocking the kidneys. That's, that's probably one of the reasons the kidneys are so, so, I mean, that's why I guess they declared kidney insufficiency like as a as a national day i think it's a day of the year that we 
we look at that because it's so important. It's such a big disease. And I think most of it's coming from a contaminated environment that's filled with metals. Where do all these metals come from? Look at a catalytic converter and you could figure it out. What are in catalytic converters? High pressure, a bunch of strange uh, metals, uh, and then heat. Boom. So all this stuff comes out. It's everywhere. It's in the air, right? Aluminum. They're made of aluminum, by the way. They're not made of steel anymore. It's called aluminum steel, but whatever. And 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 then imagine the catalytic converter multiplied times a million areas, like not only cars, but incinerators, power plants. Just put that on anything, the, the catalytic converter. And then our coal plants, whatever it is. So you can push this uptake, and I'm not saying coal's a bad thing. I'm saying that you can harm by not doing these things right and so the components you know it's like i wanted to do a ro uh, water system on my house and so um or on yeah and um on the house um sharing it with my girlfriend but um and it was like the, for the stainless steel one is like seven thousand dollars for the plastic one is like a thousand you know so you got to get the right stuff you know, you do. And it wasn't just because of stainless steel. I mean, it had a lot more features. It was a much better system. But yeah, get the right stuff from the beginning. So you don't have to mess with all this stuff. And so that's how these things are being created now because everybody's going cheap and we have to be careful because it's getting us in trouble. So um, this is multiplied times a million is creating a lot of problems at that level. Also black pepper, stimulants. There's a lot of things in the in the supply. It doesn't seem to affect everyone, but some people are very affected by black pepper, especially when it's more of a medicinal quality, like fresh crack. That harms my kidneys. I can't even touch it. So uh, we've just got all this stimulant, everything that was spices and cinnamon and cumin and all this stuff that became our norm. But they used to be medicines, you know, and so we've gone too far, and so we get we get in trouble. And so um, healing that, you know, is part of it the key here and the key is magnesium but not taking it through internally because then you're going to start the same process again the, the body has to flush it out or it's or it's a lot of people are it's laxative for them because the body's saying nope don't want it here so we don't we don't listen to the body so the best way to bring this in uh, in the proper way is to use the skin as a filter so transdermal magnesium as a filter coming in on top and so that way it can distribute in small little drops into the body perfectly as it needs to well broken down through the acidic processes of the skin, the fat conjugation processes, the ester and sugar glucose processes of the, the epiderm and deeper layers and how that's able to bring about a molecule which becomes like a food for the body or a threonate or a glycinate or a citrate or whatever it is. It becomes that in the body. All these things we create outside through other processes, we have them inside. They're just copying that and trying to maybe speed it up for you. So we're not knocking that. But this is a way to do it in full spectrum all the time, bringing that high level of purity chloride molecule to the skin and then letting that do the rest in the body. So that's the trick. And the trick is also not to get the wrong stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff out there. There's a lot of magnesium oil that's, especially in the U.S., like 95% of the brands are using genuine or ancient or Permian or whatever, but it's not coming from the original and only source in Vendam, Holland which is the Zechstein C, and even though they use the word Zechstein, doesn't mean it's from there. If it doesn't have the trademark, it's not coming from there because there's only one place. So it's very easy to know. And so there's only one place with the batch protocol, and so here's what we're doing. We go to uh, heartoftradition.com, $3 a week, doesn't cost a lot, it's in glass bottles, no endocrine disruptors, not cheap plastic, not diluted like the other people, not telling you what's in it, not solvent extracted, not chemically treated, because the, it's a natural state salt pillow formation which has magnesium chloride as its base. There's nothing you have to do to it, you don't have to separate it from anything, etc. Most people are taking a cheaper version, separating the potassium out, doing solvent extraction, and selling it. So do not be fooled. $3 a week is the right price point. Knock it out. Heartoftradition.com.